We're all trying to get our babies to sleep through the night. It doesn't matter what language we speak, what culture we come from. And so it's so neat to see not only God's word spreading, but God's word in parenting. So the principles we are teaching through the ministry, they can be applied in any country, in any culture. What our parents did, your parents did, is they did what the Judeo-Christian ethic was in a very general sense. But there was never any specifics and there was never any whys. It only becomes repeatable once you understand the why. That moment, that first contact with the Speak Life message, let me think about my background again. Because I was raised in a family. The only thing that we didn't have was life being spoken. But I didn't know how to do a different way. We have an exciting guest with us today. Yes, we do. It's going to be a great session. Yeah, are you excited about this? I am. Yeah. I am. been practicing my Portuguese. You have? I have, yes. Let's hear a little bit. Yes, bon dia. That's great. Thank you. I'll translate what that means. Uh, good day. Good day. So it's going right? to be fun. Yeah, we've got Gary <laughs> back. Gary, it's good to have you here. And we have Janesh with us, the Growing yes. Families Director National Director of yes. Ministry in Brazil. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. It's great to here. have you with us. I'm not sure if I am so excited like you because I'm afraid about my English here. <laughs> you know? Maybe with your Portuguese, I can do better. If, yeah, well, no. you've just heard all my Portuguese. So if you have more than that, you're doing great. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've heard your English and your English is very, very good. Okay, I do my best. And we have Gary here to translate for you. Oh, yes. That's yeah. the reason. If things go off the rails, he'll translate. Yep. So I'm I'm very comfortable having him here yeah. as a translator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Janarsh is a master of the English language. Yes, he, is. he understands it. We speak it, but he actually understands what is being said. So uh, he's been translating for me for years. So t t you don't have to do a specific story, but you share all the time what the funniest thing is when you're down there and he's translating. Oh, share, share with everyone what, what's so funny when you're down there he's translating for you. Well, actually, there's, just there's, generally, there's, yeah. there's two funnies. Okay. One funny is if I happen to be on a humorous roll, sometimes Janarsh, who is doing the translating, is laughing so hard <laughs> after hearing the English. So, so for people that haven't translated before, it's like you're going to say a couple of sentences then he's going to translate. So it kind of yep. goes back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth, yeah, right. back and forth. So there we are. We have hundreds of people in the audience, and he is laughing so hard that they all start laughing. Before before he translates. Before translating, yeah. Before translating. He's, before he's translating. laughing so hard. He, he can't. So I, that that happens uh, actually more than we like to think. So I feel good. My, some of those jokes are pretty good. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> it is. Uh, but I think my failure is when Janarsh tells me, it. Sometimes I just get going, yeah, and I don't pause. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on. So yeah, all the on. And, and all the audience is waiting for the translation, and he forget that he he need to stop and wait for the Portuguese translation, and the people is waiting, and so do I. And I've suddenly he look at me. I remember oh, I remember, I remember telling you that yeah. one time, and you just looked at me and put your hands up like, "What are you doing?" I can't remember all oh, that. I need to. <laughs> The Brazilians are very forgiving. Yes. Yeah, yes. I mean, they are. Yeah. So let's talk big picture. A little bit about international. You know, the ministry started back in the 80s in the U.S. So when 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 did you start seeing it go across the pond either way or maybe down? What what, what was, what, how did that, how did that happen? First, let me just say, Rich, that I, I appreciate the question because it brings me back to an emphasis, scriptural emphasis of memorials where there's always a story that God wants us to retell because he doesn't want us to forget that. And I think what you're asking is one of those memorials. It's how did all of this happen? And when we began seeing the international, I should say multinational, really investment into the ministry was probably in the late uh, 1980s. It really developed in the 90s. We crossed over to uh, classes being taught in 82 countries. 
materials translated. No, that wasn't ADT right out of the gate. N- That's not, over time, right? Well, over time, but pretty rapidly. Really? It okay. was It was within a four or five year oh my period. Wow. It had already reached 82 oh my uh, countries translated in the, all the curriculums, various curriculums, curriculums were translated. At, now we're in 34, 35 countries of all the material. And it's, I think it speaks to a, a longing, a, a hunger mm-hmm. for something. Blaise Pascal once spoke of, he used an analogy that within every human being, there is a God-shaped vacuum that nothing can fill it except God himself mm-hmm. or God's word, the presence of God's character. And I, I would like to think at least there's something within that curriculum that lifted Jesus higher that in fact began to fill and was attractive. And eventually in 1996, we made it well, before 1996, but we finally made it down in 1996 to Brazil. So the last 28 years you've been going every year, every other year? Well, sometimes we would go three times a year. Yeah, yeah, there was, yeah. there was oh, such a hunger. Wow. Uh, and it continues to be. I mean, um, we went through the pandemic, they went through the pandemic, but they went through the pandemic and recovered very quickly in terms of ministry and uh, the amount of, of new leadership training, the amount of people who are investing more and more into the ministry. Yeah. So, and I think it, it really speaks to uh, Janarsh's leadership, both he and Norma, his wife Norma, and how much he really became the person that motivated young couples to want, mm. uh, desire this. And, and he just led the way on that. Yeah, but I, I have to say that before me, two other leaders, uh, the first one was Honda and Sumi, a Japanese couple, Brazilian Japanese couple, and they launched a very good foundation for the ministry in Brazil. And because we have in that time, we had in that time uh, a good number, a number of leaders working in different ministries, they were introduced to GFI and they spread very fast the ministry in Brazil. So after Honda and Sumi, another Japanese couple, Mm -hmm. Valdemar and Beth, they did a very good job preparing the multipliers. So they prepared lots of leaders, but very uh, faithful leaders who uh, did the multiplication in their own state. So when I and Norma, uh, we assumed the ministry in 2007, we have we had a very good foundation, and so our work was much easier than the the pioneers, the the the, the people who came before us. So what we did, we spread further. We went in new states. We went uh, up north of Brazil through our uh, leadership. We raised, like uh, Gary said, new couples, young couples, and it make the it brought a fresh a fresh uh, leadership, a fresh air for the ministry and a, a new season for the ministry in Brazil. So in the last uh, 17 years <laughs> leading the ministry in Brazil, now we can see a new generation of leaders, young couples doing the ministry again. That's exciting. That is so neat. And I'm always amazed at how parenting, it's across the world. I mean, we all are dealing with children that we are trying to as Christian parents teach about the Lord that we're trying to teach o- first time obedience to, we're all trying to get our babies to sleep through yeah. the night. It doesn't matter what language we speak, what culture we come from. Yes. And so it's so neat to see not only God's word spreading, but God's word in parenting. Yes. It, that's when Garrett speaks about hungry. It's something that we, we need to say that we are not talking about growing American kids God's way. Right. We're not talking about growing Brazilian kids God's way. We're talking about growing kids. Right. So the principles we are teaching through the ministry, they are not a cultural principles. They are a biblical centered and Christ person principles. So they can be applied in any country, in any culture, in any family. It doesn't matter if they are Christians or not. It will work because it was born in God's heart for our families. So this is the, the why it spread so fast and the people receive with good hearts and they apply in their families. Yeah. That's so neat. And I still remember the very first time we went to Brazil, our oldest two children were 11 and 9, and they went with us. 
and all the kids were out playing together. Yeah. Uh, our kids spoke. It was a conference. Yeah, it was yeah. at the big conference in Sumare. 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 But anyway, there. I think a lot of the Brazilian kids knew some English. Our kids knew zero mm. Portuguese. But they all they figured it out. They pantomimed. You know, they made gestures, and they were all kind, mm. and they were all respectful to their parents, and they all. You know, when they wanted their mom or dad would would do the interrupt courtesy. And I just remember our kids felt at home, even though it was a different culture, a different language. Yeah. So like, I like hanging with these it's kids. It's hard for us. In a few minutes, they were playing with another kid's yes. there. You know? That was neat to see. Really neat to see. So it's the same when we do our national conference. And we bring people from different states in Brazil. So we have 27 states in Brazil. Our last conference, we we brought people from 19 different states. So when can we can gather them and they have the same language. It's what we call in the ministry like-minded, like-minded mm-hmm. families. So they have the same values. They have the same uh, way to, to raise their children. So, okay, some of them, they went a little bit more than others, but they are all with the same heart, seeking the God's will for their families. And when they are together, we see one language, one heart, and mm-hmm. everybody looking for the same thing from the Lord to their children. It's an amazing it uh, experience for us and see what the Lord is doing in our country through the ministry. The ministry became a big part of the University of Family back in the late 90s, so about 25 years. You've mm-hmm. been director for 17 years. Yeah. What have you seen from back then to now as far as the impact on these families from using these principles? What are some mm-hmm. things that you've seen that have encouraged you and just to share with folks yeah. where you're at? Oh, I can give many examples, but I would like just to speak for about a family, Edson and Claudette. They are from Vitoria and they were students in our first GFI class in 99. Wow. When we were living in Vitoria. In that time, they had two girls, Manuela and Vitoria. Vitoria was a baby. Now she is in the medicine school. Wow. And, Vit- and Manuela, she's a lawyer now. She's married and she has a baby. And this year, in the beginning of this year, she and her husband, they, press, they passed through the uh, GFI a training session to become GFI leaders. So for me, there is no higher reward than this. So we saw the family coming to our our living room, five couples. We are learning together, and they apply to their daughters. They become adults, GFI kids, and now they they are green kids kids. So Manuela and her husband, they are applying to, to the baby. And just like Lily, your, your granddaughter, we can see in that baby the same security, the same confidence. You can see a baby who is learning because her parents, they are uh, taking care of their marriage. They are taking care of the home environment. They are providing all the uh, needs emotional, spiritual needs that that baby have. And so we can see weekly progress in her life. And so well, what I can say, I can say her generation will be much more blessed than her parents and then her grandparents' generation because the values were introduced in her life through his parents and through uh, her parents and through her grandparents. And so, like the Edson Claudette Costa, I could be talking about hundreds or maybe thousands of families. And next July, I will be celebrating the wedding ceremony of one guy, 24 years old, an engineer. His parents passed through the first class in our living room. So your first class that you taught, he was in that. Yeah, wow. and João Pedro was a two years old boy. That's awesome. And now he's getting married, and the parents invite me to do the ceremony. Twenty five years for me leading the ministry, seventeen has the national director, 
but 25 has a GFI leader. I can see many families passing through the same transformation, the same growing, the same confidence, the same miracle coming from different cities and saying, oh, we had no hope. Mm. But the Lord gave us direction and we fixed the things that were going wrong in our family. And now we are so in peace about mm. our children. Mm, there's no greater joy than no, to hear that our no children are that, walking that in the That is the reward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no greater joy as parents to see our children that we've raised. Yeah. But a lot of these are your children. Yeah, yeah you've taken them through classes and yeah. to see them walking in That's truth. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just so beautiful. And then to see them raising their children. I often think that, you know, I'm standing on my parents' shoulders raising my kids mm -hmm. with, and now my kids. Not, not literally. Not literally, yeah, yeah, but you know, literally. figuratively yeah, what I really, yeah. but now, you know, my kids are hopefully standing on our shoulders and taking uh, what we have taught them even to greater heights. And yeah. my prayer is that as generations go, as our legacy continues, that it will only multiply and God's name would be made bigger. And Rich and Julie, we know so many parents, they they said before, I don't want to raise my children like my parents mm -hmm. did to me. Right. But when we listen, parents saying, oh, what my parents did to me was so good that I want to repeat to my... That's what we um, want, yeah. That is the gospel. That is what Jesus did for us. Yeah? Right. That's the miracle for... But but the other side, for people like me, when we first contact Jeff I, my daughters, they were 18 years old and 13 years oh, old. Oh, wow. The only thing that I, me and Norma, we used to say, well, oh, my goodness, we should be learning this 18 years ago. But the Lord brought one, one thing to my heart. When you realize that something was not going well or you did wrong, the Bible says, repent. You don't need to repent because you were uh, a kind of parent that did something wrong because you hate your children, but because you're ignorant. So for many times, I approach my daughters and ask them for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We yeah. did wrong because we didn't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Damar is my oldest one, used to say, only you didn't know. I already knew that you were doing wrong. <laughs> you never believe me. She was saying, okay, can you forgive me? Good transition. <laughs> Thanks, darling. <laughs> what are some things as a father that this ministry has impacted you with? What, what are a couple of things that mm -hmm. you as a father, you've been changed? Yeah. First, the proud in my heart. Mm. Because... <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> When you, uh, and for me, it's harder because my background wasn't a good background. My family history was not a, what we can call regular family and a regular home environment. Wasn't, it wasn't ideal. Yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. Even though it was not lack of love, of lack, it was lack of wisdom. Right. Lack of knowledge lack of vision. But when I first contact with this, the proud of my heart was broken and make me ask for my daughter's forgiveness. And from that day on, I start doing things that I never did before. The things that you learn when you were young, the dead notes, I start doing when my daughters- to the kids, yeah. They were almost adults, yeah. you know? But I start doing that quality time. I was start doing that to take my daughters to the restaurant one each time uh, in a regular base to have a, a, a time with dad. So it changed in a such a way that today I'm here with you in Charleston. And I think that at least two or three times today, I talk to my daughters. Mm -hmm. They That's are beautiful. adults now. Yeah. You know? So the relationship changed a lot. Yeah, and for me it was a really uh, huge transformation. Mm -hmm. The proud of my heart, the skills that I didn't have, because I didn't had, I didn't have the 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 example at home. I didn't have a, a present father for doing that to me. My father died when I was one and a half years oh, old. Oh wow! 
I had two stepfathers. The first one was an alcoholic, left my mother when I was eight, and she got married again when I was 14. So I lost all that transition from the childhood to teenagers without a, a, a man at home. Right. And so recognize that that lack, that uh, hole in your heart, like Gary said, it's uh, only God can feel it himself. So who's the person who transmit the character of God? In my case, I didn't have a father to do that to me. Mm. So many things that I did wrong was the absence of an example, absence of some good practicals in our, uh, our family. How quickly did you see your girls' hearts to change once you repented and started applying the things that you were learning? Was it a they all of a sudden, or was it this? No. Oh. So for people that yeah, are was not much easier. Snap of the finger. Yeah. yeah, it was much easier with Elena because she was thirteen. Okay. We we had less offenses, less a struggle between the issues to deal less with. Hurt. Yeah, 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 less hurt. Yeah. For example, I I very fast realized that how much important for her was my presence and moments in her life. She was doing sports. And sometimes she called me, oh, dad, can you take me to the to the gym for the sports? I was so busy. I said, okay, it's my opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I went. When she finished, dad, can you take me here? So I can. So, <laughs> but I went. And when I arrived there, it was so funny because when I arrived there was a, a handball team from her mm -hmm. school. She looked at me and said, that just you came to pick me up all of girls other girls the year alone could you give them a ride mm. oh my goodness my car was packed <laughs> of girls on top yeah <laughs> almost that the truck you know oh, four or five car. girls plus my daughter and me and i see her face shine because i am not just her dad taking her but doing a good role for her mm. friends and stopping for a nice green with all the girls. Oh, and even really today. hit yes. it the park. Yes. Okay. So, I, this I is, know why they're happy. This is about the, the ice cream. Yeah. But Damaris was a little harder. Okay. We, we had to spend more time, more time talking, more time asking forgiveness, more time, more time trying to show her that she could trust on me. Yeah, trust takes so, time. Yes, it and does. you know, once you lose the confidence, it's hard to get it back yeah, again. Right. So uh, the time I I waste, I had to spend the double to recover the the to be to become trustworthy. Right. In my daughter's my daughter's eyes. So answering in a short sense, faster with the young mm -hmm. younger, more time with the older because the heart was offended, but the Lord gave us victory in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I think this is a just a great point for all the dads that may be listening. I'm sure, uh, but I'll ask you, Janosh, you remember the moments, such as picking up all the girls, taking them all for ice cream, going to your daughter's game, being the only dad there. I, I, I can relate with that. But you probably don't remember what exactly you were so busy doing when you broke away. Mm -hmm. Point being, we, we think it's so important mm -hmm. what's in front of us that sometimes our children are the ones that's going to produce the lasting memory because I can't remember what was troubling me that I would have to not show up at my daughter's basketball game or, or whatever sport she may have been in or whatever orchestra or choir she was she was in. And I think that sometimes the tyranny of the urgent yeah. captivates us when we have to think, you know, the hearts of our children need to captivate mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And when you have that perspective, yeah. you in 20 years later, you will remember the moments with your daughter. You won't remember what supposedly was captivating you in yeah. the tyranny of the urgent. Well, I know speaking yeah. for myself, it's the 
schedule at the office. It's preparing for the next meeting. It's the email that came in, the phone call that you have to make that you feel like if you don't do it today, it's not going to, you know, be impactful. And really all that stuff is pretty immaterial right. in the grand scheme of things compared yeah. to building a relationship with your spouse and your kid. Yeah. So, and this change was so deep because when I moved from Vitoria to Sao Paulo, working the, at the office, University of the Family Office, we are doing our agenda, all the directors, all the people working there, and they say, oh, let's do this on this month, this day. So I, I, oh, I can't. So why? Because it's holiday. No, it's, it's not holiday. Yes, it's holiday in my family. <laughs> uh, yes. Because it was my daughter's birthday. Oh, yes, oh, that's yeah. a big holiday. It's national yeah. holiday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. we have national holidays are their birthdays. We have the international holiday is her birthday, Norma birthday. <laughs> Your wife. We yes. have interplanetary. My birthday is multinational. <laughs> international. Yeah. yeah. No, my is interplanetary. <laughs> it's my birthday. Oh, my. Yeah. Is the ga oh galactic? Galactic. Gal yes. Galactic. <laughs> yeah. It's our marriage. So what's Gary's uh, birthday? Then? Yeah. Oh my goodness! It's the, it's the Big Bang. <laughs> 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 I still remember that at the next birthday. Yeah, thank you. We're gonna get to. I want to. I want to hear your thoughts when you heard in a minute the speaking mm -hmm. life message for the first time from Gary. So I want to go to you next. After Gary, I'm going to ask you maybe two thoughts. One would be in your 25 plus years going there. What to Brazil? What have you seen transition with your interaction with the families? And then secondly. You know, you've been working with him now for almost two decades. And Arsh, what have you seen in him transition or stay consistent? So, you know, from the country standpoint mm -hmm. and then from him, what, what have you seen? Well, it's a couple of things with the country. I, I, I really do, both Emery and I do believe that when we first arrived in Brazil, mm -hmm. there was a very healthy upper class, wealthy class, and there was a great great number of poverty, very small middle class. We've watched the country evolve in, in the, just a massive growth of the middle class. So 25-ish years. Uh, yeah. We used to go from the airport, because it's still the same airport, downtown in maybe 15 minutes. Now, there is no way you could go from the airport. We had no cars, really. You can't get out of the parking lot. You can't get out of the <laughs> No. Uh, it. To see that, so in terms of the health of the nation, uh, I mean, they have their ups and downs. They sure. have some of their currency problems like everyone else. But in terms of the growth of this middle class and middle class values, it's it's a completely new country, and we celebrate with them. Uh, we love it. But I think, too, Rich, we had the opportunity to see the leadership vision of what a ministry can do. And their vision was to take, really, uh, the Word of God, curriculums that were God-centered, and their vision was to impact every level of society, financial, the political, education arena, into that. So they have influence on these. They yeah. have influence. Right. I think it was the six, the seven major uh, social institutions that are part of every country. And to watch that, I remember one conference we were doing and Janars was translating, and I know he remembers it. It was actually rather intimidating for me because in that conference, we had uh, all of the military. We had the secretary of education. We had uh, judges. We had a number of district attorneys, state attorneys. We had Every level of government represented in this room, and it was massive. I, I forget the number. How 90, hundred people. Yeah, it, but it was massive. So almost 2,000 people. Wow. No, no. Uh, this, this, oh, 900 people. I just, was doubled, in, I just doubled it. Yeah, it was in Campo Grande, Mato Grosso do Sul. And I, 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 at that moment, I realized, look what a vision can do. Mm -hmm. Because they had, in fact, in their efforts put together a whole coalition of uh, different departments within the society, different entities within society to become really human uh, change, help change lives in, in a very drastic way because they brought God into it. 
where we can't quite do that. It, we have a lot of challenges here in the U.S., but in places like Brazil and most other places in the world, yeah. uh, the, the fear of God is not, it's not uh, a big issue. So God, if God works, bring it in. Very pragmatic. And in Brazil, God works for them. Mm -hmm. And so to watch this vision unfold and then be realized is really quite amazing. Let's expand on that word vision. When you hear that word, when you hear mm -hmm. Gary talking about mm -hmm. some of his observations, what do you think of when you hear the word vision? What does that mean to you? What does that mm -hmm. mean to your team, yep. your parents and families down there? Yep. It, this, it, if it's true what we, if we've been learning or we've been taught about vision, so it's the future that will have in heart your preferred future. Mm -hmm. That's the sense. But sometimes we see that the our generation they are not uh, looking for the vision, uh, the vision for the future. They are. When you say, what age group are you talking about there? Oh, we thirty-five, forty. Okay, so the thirty-year-old. Okay. okay, all right. People between thirty and forty okay. for something. Yep. So people was born on on eighties, yeah, and they are adults now. They are raising their families now. They have children now, but they are so busy working for uh, making money, progressing their career. And when you talk, and we are here uh, about parenting, it seems to me that they have no vision about that. They think they are doing well, but when you see some of them with teenagers. They just realized that mm, something was not working so well as I I I planned it. So the the vision that I have is now applying my example on that. If I had vision when my daughters was they were born, probably I didn't had this. I didn't have the problems I I face the time they become teenagers. Right. Right. No. So if you don't have vision for the future and you don't have plans for the future, you're not intentional in what you are doing with your children now, looking what kind of children I want to have in the next 15 years. Uh, I know what is waiting for you in the future. Regret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Regret. Pain. Yeah. Suffering. Mm -hmm. And to be v honest with you, last night... I spent 40 minutes on my phone talking to a friend of mine. He has one son, 20, 28 years old. His son is involved with drugs for 16 years. Wow. From 12 years old, now he's involved with drugs. And he told me last night, Janat, can you imagine the pain in our hearts? Can we imagine the imagine the the bat pain? Bat is his wife. Pain. Say, I can, I can, because in that time they they are my friend. Oh, I married them, I did the ceremony, and so when we heard about the vision, vision something that we need to seek help, seek instruction, assistance discipleship now when your children are still uh babes or the first uh, years of life yeah don't 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 wait until it gets bad no. to start a vision i mean no. you don't have to wait no so vision for me is to be intentional diligent humble to sit and and learn from others like you like our leadership how can I? Uh, how can we prevent the things that brought bring pain to to the heart of a, a father of a mother? Yeah. It's yeah. about parenting. This is vision for me. Do now what is necessary to achieve the goals for my children in the future. Yeah, I love that intentional, right? Diligent, humble, and humble. Really, really, really good words to latch on. Yeah. To. What is it? If you fail to plan, you should plan to fail. Yep. Yeah, and, and the blessing for you and I as being around in the ministry many, many years is to look at Rich and Julie, who are the masters of communicating. What does a vision look like, and what are the steps to fulfill it? And I've heard their message on vision mm -hmm. many times, 
And the only thing I can say is it keeps getting better. I don't know how it could get better. But what they do. I think do, that's our next podcast. Yeah. Cast. <laughs> cast in the vision. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm excited to, to talk about that yeah. because when people walk out, I'll say this. When people walk out of a session that they just finished, I've seen this over and over. They walk out with a smile on their face and you can see hope in their eyes. Yes. And that's exactly what we want to communicate to bring hope to the present. And you do so because you're casting the vision. This is what you're looking for, and here's how you get there. Two more thoughts. You used to say that. For us, we are now a little bit older. older. Uh, many I just say you're a little more seasoned. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Gary used to say that many things we did, we did by faith because you, you have no morals. To, to to look to that and see, oh, they did this and this is working. Because his ministry is about 30-something years now. So they start doing something by the faith in the Word of God. The Word of God doesn't fail. But now we have couples like you and like hundreds or thousands. Then we can see the fruit. This is the, the hope that we are talking about. We are not telling uh, something that we have no evidence. We still have faith in the Word of God, but we have something to show. It works. It, that was, uh, I mean, when I thought about the, uh, Edson, Claudetti, Luciana and Ariana, and now we are talking about you because you have the cloud of witness yes. to show that what we've been teaching for three decades it works because it's based, based on the Word of God. That's the hope that we are bringing to the those who are listening, listening us or watching us now. Yeah, yeah. I think it back to our parents. They did a good job. I mean, mm -hmm. but, man, wouldn't it have been awesome if they would have had this stuff around? Yeah. yeah. Why did you wait until after we were... <laughs> Like in high school or college to I, do this, Gary and Ann Marie. I mean, I think he's younger than our peers. So that's yeah, right. that's true. <laughs> but I was I'm being okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, but man, wouldn't it have been great as a kid to have all of this stuff? Yeah. I mean, I probably want to try some of the things yeah. I tried, but we're not going to talk about. Well, that that's why I think we're standing on their shoulders. But, but what you could do, we we can do another podcast of the evolution, uh, the positive evolution of the theology of the family, theology of parenting, yeah. which prior to really the early 1980s was non-existent. Interesting. And so what our parents did, your parents did, is they did what the Judeo-Christian ethic was in a very general sense, but there was there were never any specifics and there was never any whys. So what this generation has, and this carried into Brazil, and the Brazilians love it, they learn, why am I doing this? Not, yeah. you do this because God will, God will bless you. Okay, tell me why. why. And so they have the big why. And I think that's been a big part of the international message is parents understanding, oh, this is why I'm doing it. Well, it only becomes, it only becomes repeatable once you understand the why, mm -hmm. right? Because if you just do the how, you're not creating a repeatable, repeatable occurrence for your children or for you as a parent because all you're doing is the task at hand and you're not internalizing. It's not going into your heart of why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a task. Well, I think it's why is one reason, Rich, it multiplied so quickly because n you're not only duplicating a how, you're, you're really multiplying the why. Right. And the, the why of why we do what we do because of who God is really becomes the driving force that seals all around the world, all of these countries, all of these other ministries, while everyone's in lockstep because they have a common why. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the, the why is attached to the foundation that is the word of God and the desirable future. The things do are looking ahead. This is the why. The process is the, the how. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. How can we start here from from the foundation until reach the, the results? That's the how. If you stay just with the how, you lost the foundation and you lost the future. Yeah. You, sorry, wrong word. You lose the foundation, you lose the future. Right. The how doesn't have the, the security that you need to do something. 
Yeah. Yeah. Why give you the security? The how does not have a purpose. And if you don't have a purpose, purpose then yeah. what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Well, yeah. then the, it doesn't become repeatable. No. It, it, no, it you can't stop it at the instant. Yeah, you just yeah. don't start, you don't repeat things. You just stop and go, okay, I'm done with it. Yeah, until a new philosophy comes along that looks shiny and nice or a, a new reel on Instagram that looks shiny and nice. Yeah. That's right. a and and how many false hope house yeah. we, we saw along the years because any theory is about the how yeah. and bringing false hopes for the people. So the how can be a good thing you think you can see, but because it's not attached to, to the Hawaii, can be a false hope for the people. Disappointment, because they did all the how, but the results wasn't good because there's no why. Behind. So where would you throw like a Brazilian churrascaria in? Would that be, where's the how and why with that? I mean, it's it's a really good experience, Gary. How would you how would you put that? Well, how would you okay. formulate that? that yeah, I think you need yeah. to define it first. That, that well, become, define it first. That, well, define it first. That, well, the Brazilian churrasco, there is nothing greater than a Brazilian steakhouse. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> okay. And that is not a how or why, Rich. Squirrel. That is... That it's thing. not a squirrel. They do yeah. not. They do not have squirrel meat there. I know yeah. that for sure. So not a squirrel. That's but. just a prime motivator. Can you come down three times this year? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, so, so that's why you go down there yeah, so but often. But it is okay. why because we are duplicating. You are doing very good. You are show us this year. You have a good foundation. You learn from that. You are duplicating. Yes. That's the, the process. Yep. You know? Bringing Brazilian steakhouse to America. <laughs> yeah. One, yeah. One piece of bacani at a time. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, that's right. laughs> <laughs> okay. Gary brings down, Gary and Emery come down. You hear the speaking life message for mm -hmm. the first time. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that impacted you first, like mm -hmm. inside you, how you've grown in that way and what you've seen happen in Brazil because of that message through the ministry that you know you've been directing. Yeah, the first time I heard this was in 2010, your first time in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I remember your daughter and my niece presenting okay. the Speak Life song on yes. the stage. Right. Top Mac song. Right. Speak Toby Life. Mac. Yeah. Top Mac. Ah, yes. And in uh, that moment, that first contact with the Speak Life message, let me think about my background again, mm. because I was raised in a family. The only thing that we didn't have was life being spoken. So everything in my family was using dirt words, death and words, death death words. words yep. and the screaming. Wow. Who could, who could scream the loudest got the most attention. Yeah. Probably. Mm. So uh, what was the motto that I, my how, as a father, was to repeat the motto that I received at yeah. home. The death message. The death message. When I told you about the hurts in my daughter's heart, was about that. Mm. Screaming and death words. Mm. Screaming and death words. So it was so impacting for me because I think that more than my daughters, Norma uh, suffered with this, this kind of behavior. Yeah. Nor Norma's your wife. Yep. Yes, my wife. Yep. Yep. Because she was raised in a different environment, mm. a life speaking family. Oh, wow. And for many times, Norma came to me, tonight, why you need to say that and scream like you do with your daughters? But I didn't know how to do a different way. That was the huge impact in my life. Mm -hmm. It was a life changing uh, a mindset changing, a vocabulary changing, exercise of self-control, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. control yourself. And, Are you okay over there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> so the more we spread this message, each time that Gary is when Mahiwa went to Brazil and they repeat the message, right. more we can we could see the people's eyes just like this i'm doing mm -hmm. yeah open there yeah. open saucers yeah and say oh my now i got it what is going wrong in our family so we've been uh this kind of change that i face in my life in so many families and uh 
the way the the parents are treating their children, husbands and wives, because it's not about parenting only. It's in all areas of our lives. Right. Yeah. In our work and uh, public life in the market and uh, transportation, everywhere you have opportunity to speak deaf words or life words, life-giving words. So for me, it was a huge transformation. It's not easy, uh, I have to say that. But once you understand, you you change completely you, the, the fruits that you are taking from your family garden. You know, the fruits are different because the life-giving words, they, they not just promote growth, but they promote beauty and they promote something that is tasteful for mm. those who are around you, you know, because everybody is attracted by the beauty, by the, the grace, by the love, and the good things that you are transmitting through your words. Yeah. So true. That's so true. Yeah, the, the screaming and the yelling gets short-term obedience, but not the long-term fruit mm -hmm. that we're going yeah. after. I mean, as parents, that's Be what we want. Because it's based on fear. Right not based in love and obedience. So you look out 10, 15 years, what's your vision for the ministry in Brazil or impact that GFI will have on families down there? What are some things that come to mind, your heart, when you think out 5, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years? Yeah. I can see a new generation of children in the schools. When Gary says that we are touching the most relevant areas in our society, it's true. Yesterday, one GFI leader from one small town, he called me and said, Janachi, we are going to Pompeia with a, with a group of people uh, in different positions of our city because we want to bring the teachings to our schools and social uh, area, even to the jail. So we are taking all these authorities to, to see what you are doing in your town. It's, oh my goodness. So... I can see the future. If you if you can't see for all the nation, but you can see the light shine in in all the cities and all the states in Brazil, because each family can be a lighthouse, shine strongly, showing the life, showing Jesus, showing the the abundant the, the life that the Lord planned for every single family. If we have those lighthouse families we can attract more people, can attract. So my vision for the future is the future is this, reaching all the world, one family, family at a time. At a time. So we are not in a fast racing. We are we are in a marathon. Yep. Mm. And we are doing step by step, looking to the target, blessing families, spreading the teaching, training leaders multiplying facilitators and every single week that is the truth we receive testimonies from all brazil all over brazil people saying thank you our family were changed our uh, marriage were blessed our children received this and this compliment from the teachers from the neighbors because of their behavior we we have testimonies even in the our uh, president. Wow! Because one of the bodyguards, they passed. He this it was a military. He passed through the GFI class, and uh, his son gave a so strong testimony that the official was touched by his testimony. Invited his father for a meeting when they were choosing the uh, official guard for the president. Wow! Can you imagine that <laughs> one child play in the in the common area in their condominium, and so they are good friends. And the official said, "Oh, I don't know the father, but I know that he's a good guy because his son behavior." And he gave this testimony in one of our right. conferences. Right. Wow. And so okay. that and that's who the president selected to be the bodyguard. Wow, because he saw the son even though he didn't know who is his father. Yeah. yeah. Because I've seen what I need to protect me yeah. mm -hmm. in the sun. Yeah. 
It's amazing. It's amazing. It reminds me how you, the, that reminds me how you got into school by picking up the napkin in the cafeteria. Right. Someone, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the little things that we do when people aren't watching. That's yeah. a reflection of our character that's right. that impacts people right. sometimes the most. It's a boy with yeah. five lawns and two fish. It's yep. to mm-hmm. proceed a big miracle. Yeah. yeah, and it's the character of God that they're character seeing in the children, yeah. and that's our goal. We tell our children, "You need to glorify God," and they're like, "How do I do that?" Just yep. be kind. Yeah. Pick up an app. Be, be generous. Be, yeah. be generous. Be generous. Be polite. Be grateful. And yeah. when you do, you make God bigger. Yeah. Bigger. That one one family at a time. Yeah. One family at a time. Well, it's been great. It's been really great. Yeah. Thank you. Any closing thoughts? Any additional thoughts? Well, I will say that it's been uh, both Emery and my greatest joy to be part of the Brazilian community. One, one time, I think in 2019, our highest honor was when at that one last major conference before the COVID broke to at the end of that conference for the Brazilian community to wrap us in the Brazilian flag, which is saying, you are one of us. And that has always been our heart. And I think that is the highest honor we've ever had, Janash, mm-hmm. is to be part of that community because we love it. We see what has transpired there. We've seen the it, the beauty of so many thousands of families. Mm-hmm. And we have so many wonderful relationships down there, but in part because of my friend, Janash. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I... I I need to be grateful to the Lord because there is a man couple, Jorge Márcio Nishimura. Who are those guys? A couple, a simple couple, even though they are involved in big business in Brazil, they are uh, a really succeed businessman, his family, but because of his uh, humble heart, the Lord used this couple opened the doors of our nation for five different ministries that today is called the University of the Family in our nation. So I would like to honor them because of their vision, not just for them, for their family, but for the nation. Millions of Brazilians have been blessed through the ministries, including Growing Families International. And now, after 30 years leading the ministry, Fabio and Claudia are the new leaders of our ministry, a young couple. This is the reason why I have hope for the future. Well, and Fabio and Claudia's father actually took a, a class in Kansas. No, he, no, 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 no. He was visiting a friend in visiting Kansas, friend. Kansas, and he took the Growing God's Way book to Brazil, and they ran the first class using... The English version. Right, yeah. but that was Fabio and Claudia's the father, father yeah. that did that. Fabio and now Fabio yeah. and Claudia are running yeah. University of Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was, and that true, the, that's the, amazing. the work of God. Because amazing. he was just visiting someone from Brazil who was an exchange student, but in the family that he was staying with, just for dinner, he saw their children and was so taken back by their most gracious, wonderful behavior. And they were young children. He said, what did you do? What are you doing? And he brought out the growing kids. So all those families listening right now in the corn and soybeans in the middle of America are saying, that's where everything that's starts. Right, right that's here. Right. That's right. That's right. It starts right in the I mean, corn. You yeah. Two young boys whose behavior was so compelling that it ended up changing an entire nation. Is so wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. And this is who I am. I am honor my leadership and say, it doesn't matter how big you are or how small you feel yourself, the, Lord's ca- the Lord can use all of us. Yes, he does and use all of yes, us. Yes, yes. And the, the, the more you understand uh, our position in the kingdom, more glory we bring to the Lord. Yeah. Yes. It's about him, but he can use us. So I thank Lord for George and Marcia and Ishimura because we, we know their character, yes. humble people, they love the Lord, Fabio and Claudia, and they have four children, and they raise their children using Green Kids God's Way since the preparation class, and the Lord is using these people to bring healing to our nation, to bring encouragement for the family, and transformation for, for our nation. So thank you, Lord, for yeah. uh, be part of this 
big plan yeah. that only awesome. him know the end. Yes. But we are part of that. I'm I'm thank you. That's great. I thank you, Laura. Well, Julie, it's been a great it has. time here. Thank you, Char. Yeah, Appreciate thank you, Gary. You. Thanks, Thanks, Gary. It's been great having you guys here. <laughs> thank and you. until next time. So been great. Thank you for listening to the Life Parenting Podcast hosted by Growing Families. We hope you've been encouraged and strengthened in your role as a parent. In the show notes, you'll see links to the growingfamilies.life website, where you can find more information and resources, including videos, links to sign up for one of our online parenting classes, and information on how to connect with a contact mom. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love for you to consider subscribing so you get these episodes right when they come out. If you're enjoying the podcast, we'd love for you to give us a five-star review on your podcast platform of choice to help others find this resource. If you prefer the video format of the podcast, click subscribe to the Growing Families Life YouTube channel so that you'll see new episodes when they're posted. Thanks for listening.